Welcome, everybody. Good afternoon uh, to Better Investing. Uh, today, we're going to share with you some of our insights and resources that helps to make our members better investors. Uh, we're our three directors from the San Francisco Bay Area chapter of Better Investing. My name is Harriet Chan. I will be taking the first uh, section uh, of this presentation. Jim Wilcox, uh, he will take the midsection and Craig Bremer will take the third and final sections. I do wanna mention that we're all volunteers. Um, I was told that uh, you wanna hear that I should tell you about my investment club uh, experience. I started my first investment club in 1999. Um, I was also a member of the San Francisco Model Club and I had also started an option investment club. Uh, the last seven years, I've been a caregiver to my 93-year-old mother-in-law, but currently I am starting a, a new club, the a virtual investment club. And what I mean by virtual is that we don't co-mingle our money. Um, okay, next slide. Disclaimer. Just want to mention that um, this class and all the material is for education purposes. Next slide. This is our agenda. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, who we are, uh, better investing, why starting an investment club, starting an investment club, education opportunities, the investment tools that we have and a little summary. Um, I think that, uh, okay, next slide. We are a 501c nonprofit organization. We've been in existence for over 70 years. Uh, we started, um, it was founded in 1951 in Detroit, Michigan by three investment club two in Detroit and one in Ann Arbor. Uh, these, cl these clubs built successful portfolio and thought other needs to know how to do this. So that's what Better Investing does. Basically, we share our experience and hopefully um, help people become long-term investors. Um, so we're, he we're here as a nonprofit association of investment clubs and individuals. And we're here to serve our, our members. Uh, we do this by creating and delivering education programs about fundamental long-term investing. We also have online stock analysts and other tools that reinforce the lessons of fundamental investing. It's a combination of education and the tools that help clubs and individuals become successful long-term investors. Um, as a nonprofit, we don't charge commissions and we don't make investment recommendations. We are not stockbrokers. Instead, we teach our members and how to determine whether a stock is worthy of your hard earned money. And we teach members how to determine the price at which to buy the stock that will give them the return they're seeking. Next slide. Uh, our local chapters, we're all volunteers um, and you and every one of you is welcome to join us. We have a board meeting uh, the second Tuesday each month at 7.30 and our meetings are fairly uh, efficient. They usually only last an hour. Um, we have participated with the San Francisco Public Library in April, in April for Financial Literacy Month for over six years now. Um, we have a model club and anyone is welcome to attend to see the process and procedures for an investment club. Um, we're Zooming the meetings now and it is on the third Thursday at 545. Second Thursday, Harriet. Pardon? Second Thursday. Second Thursday, I'm sorry. Thank you for the correction. Um, we also have have had a Zoom classes during this pandemic. Um, so, okay, next slide. 
Okay, our mission. We're, uh, our mission is to create successful lifelong investors. Uh, we're all volunteers and there's roughly about 600 volunteers educators. So we have helped over 5 million people from all walks of life to learn how to improve their financial futures. Okay, all right. Uh, next slide. <clears throat> this is a very important slide. I would suggest that you study the slide, do some basic math, and you can see the magic of compounding. Uh, I want you to kind of look at the long-term growth of these different asset class. The top two lines with the um, green circle, th those are the small cap and the large cap returns. Large cap return 10 and a half percent and small cap returns 12.4%. So you can see that for every dollar, uh, how much it has grown. And you can compare that to the other different classes. So if you're looking at uh, T-bills uh, and treasury bills, um, government bonds is returning, um, treasury bills are returning three and a half percent and government bonds at 5.7. And the inflation rate over this 90 year period has been about 3%. Um, So basically, if you invested $1 in 1925, by 2016, that $1 would have grown to uh, the amount over what you see on the right-hand side. So $1 of short uh, small cap stocks would have, would have become, for every dollar, would have become $36,000. And for the large caps, it would have grown to $7,000. $7,338. Um, that's very different from the T-bills where that $1 only grows to $22. Um, it's the, the, the stock market really does make your money work hard. Um, my mother was not lucky enough to get this information about investing in stocks. And our lives could have been a lot better if this information was available. Um, th there's investment risk and there's uh, inflation risk. To me, inflation risk is much more risky than inflation risk because I lived through it. Um, okay. Okay. So uh, regardless of the risk, I think that stocks offer the best return on your investment over the long term. And so I really would recommend that you look over this graph and think about it and, uh, and call us if you have any questions. Um, Jim is gonna take over the next set of slots, all right? Thank you, Harriet. Mm -hmm. uh, brief introduction. I've been investing since the 80s. Uh, and the longer I invested, the more money I had to invest. Uh, and I got more serious in club investing uh, shortly after the turn of the century and helped found the Bay Area Model Investment Club in 2011. And, uh, have held several positions there, currently the treasurer for the last few years. This slide, our core beliefs. Successful stock investing is possible for everyone. That doesn't mean that everyone's going to go about it the same way. There's no magic. There's no secret formula or insider information. Uh, it takes time and it takes some work. But we have fun at it, and we think you can too. And that leads to our emphasis on investment clubs. Our second point, that together we can accomplish more, it has two kind of components to it. One is in a club, you have, 
by definition, have a number of people. So you have diversity of education, occupation, experience. Everyone brings a different set of information, understanding, education to the table. And it's by pooling that as a club that you gain a better insight, hopefully, into the stocks that you're looking at to see if you want to invest them. But the group dynamic is very good. It's very, very helpful. We say investment clubs provide a safe and supportive way to learn how to invest. We focus a lot on education in the model club. We have a segment on education in each of our meetings, which are once a month, because to be a successful investigator, you have to educate yourself. You have to learn the jargon. We all know that every group has its own specific jargon and you got to understand it. Even if you don't buy or sell trades, but deal with an advisor, you should be able to understand what your advisor is saying so that you can agree, disagree uh, with that person's opinions and ask you know, hopefully intelligent questions. Clubs are supportive because you have group decisions after research is done and you have a vote by the club whether or not to invest in a particular stock or to sell a stock you hold. You don't go by tips, you don't go by impulse. Most clubs meet monthly or sometimes less frequently. You're not acting on spur of the moment media sensations. There's no rush to judgment. I liken an investment club to kind of an exercise club. We all know we should exercise. It's very difficult if you do it all by yourself. If you have a friend or two friends and you encourage each other, it's time to go for a walk, it's time to go to the gym, you're more likely to go for a walk or go to the gym. If you have an investment club meeting once a month, you get some pressure to do your homework. Everybody does. And when you get together, you enjoy the fruits, not only of your homework, your research, your thoughts, your opinions, your experience, but that of the other people in the club. We say investment clubs are safe way to learn. Why? First, if you follow the guidelines, you don't put all your eggs in one basket and you are thoroughly researching the stocks before you invest in them. And in any group, you're going to have few people who will uh, want to argue or discuss uh, the merits of a stock. Plus in the club, you're investing just a small portion of your assets. In our club, uh, the minimum monthly investment is $25. If you join the model club, there's uh, an initial joining. It's not a fee because it's all invested, but you put in $125 and then between $25 and $100 a month, uh, that is not a king's ransom. It's all invested. The only fees or charges that you have, which you would have in any investment club are uh, brokerage fees, if any, although trades mostly now are free. Uh, you have to have an accounting uh, system to back up, and you can go with a website. And there are other small costs that a club uh, has to endure. For example, a fictitious business name, setting up a business entity to be the club. But again, in numbers, all of these costs are very small. The costs for our club are per member, something around the neighborhood of $25 a year for accounting, tax prep, website, uh, and all that goes with that. Next slide, please. Why do we believe better investing will work for you? It's a common sense approach. And even though common sense is sometimes seems to be rare, it still exists. What we believe in doing is 
evaluating the past of your stock, your company. How did it do? If you like the way the company's done to date, then you try to estimate the future. What do I think will happen in the next five years? Will this company still be in business? Will they be expanding? Are they becoming outmoded? Once you've accomplished those two things, then you discuss and debate. That's the monthly meeting or the bi-monthly meeting or the quarterly meeting. So people can come up uh, with their questions, can get them answered. And after you've discussed and debated whether you should buy this stock and if so, how much, and should you sell something, then you have a vote. And in our club, majority rules, just one person, one vote. The second thing about a club is to the extent the club pushes it, you have a lot of education and information available to you, particularly through better investing. Uh, on our website for our club, you can go back and look at all of the stocks we've ever looked at. Uh, we've been in existence 11 years uh, on the BI website. There are recorded presentations, there are events noted, there are a myriad of educational opportunities, which will be touched on later by Craig. Tools and resources, uh, Better Investing has some basic tools and then uh, a large number amount of resources. One of our basic tools is called the Stock Selection Guide, which is a form. A lot of it you can is filled out for you, giving you historical data on earnings, on sales, on PE ratios, and other things. And then uh, part of the SSG, after it's given you the numbers for how the stock has performed in the past, it asks you to estimate how you think the stock will perform in the next five years. And you don't have to you know, scratch your head and come up with a number. It provides links to available sources of information to tell you what other people are thinking this company will do in the next five years. And there's another form, which is called a first cut form, which I believe is very helpful because it forces you to answer the why questions. Why do you think this company will do well in the future? Why do you think that its earnings will increase 10% per year for the next five years? Uh, those also are topics, good topics for discussion when your club is evaluating stock. We all have uh, different opinions, and the group dynamic allows you to put all those opinions together and you have the benefit of a wide range from which the group can decide which estimate uh, is the best or the most comfortable for them. Community support, or community and support. Again, the BI website offers the opportunity for you to view others' work. If you're researching the ABC company, you can go on the website and see if, has someone else researched it? Did they fill out a, curse, a first cut form? What did they say about why they thought the stock should be bought? Uh, did other people do a stock selection guide on it? If so, what did they say? What did they estimate? What figures did they come up with? Again, this is kind of an expansion of the group dynamic. You're putting the work of others to work for yourself. There also are ways to communicate with other clubs or to raise a general question about procedures or practices and get some feedback. Next slide, please. What is an investment club? That's basically a group of people with a shared interest in investing. Frequently, they also share another interest. They may all work in the same office 
or just be in the same profession. Uh, there are a lot of investment clubs that are family oriented, mom, dad, kids, aunts, uncles, cousins. It doesn't really matter uh, where the people come from, but frequently there is this commonality. Some people do it uh, with just their friends. They aren't related by marriage or work or profession. Personally, I think it's fun to have a club with people from all walks of life and certainly different ages and perspectives. Why start an investment club? Uh, one I mentioned earlier, if, if you have the group dynamic, gives you a little push to do your homework. You have to study. You don't become educated by sleeping with the book under your pillow. You have to open it up and read it. The same goes for investing. You have to do a little work. In a club, you share the work. Many hands make light work. That's an excellent reason for starting a club. Plus, of course, you get uh, the group dynamic and you widen uh, the knowledge base of the people analyzing the stock. You take any, like Disney. A lot of people like Disney. Some people don't. Or some of the social media companies, or maybe uh, people, you, you have a banker who understands banks. Uh, many of us don't understand banks and how they make money. So get a nice diverse group and it will be better for you. It will expand your opportunities. Next slide. How do we operate? We are fundamental investors. Sometimes that's hard to explain, but we, we look at how does, what does the company do? How does the company make money? We tend to follow Warren Buffett who says, don't invest in a company you don't understand. If you don't know how the company makes money, it's very difficult to estimate how you think it's going to do in the future. So you look at the fundamentals, uh, how much debt do they have? How do they spend their money? What's their executive compensation? Uh, compare them with their rivals, with their competitors. But the four principles outlined, I think show in many ways uh, what a fundamental investor does. First, you invest regularly. That's why we require every member to invest every month. It has to be a habit. You're not going to make money grow unless you invest it. You're not going to win the lottery if you don't buy a lottery ticket. Not that the stock market is a lottery, but the point's the same. You have to put in the original dollar. Now, Harriet's slide showed what $1 90 years ago would have done. I, I don't think many of us were alive then but I've been investing long enough to know that investing regularly pays dividends literally and figuratively. Reinvest the dividends. That's the second nature of compounding. If you don't reinvest your dividends, your investment will grow much more slowly. You've already set the money aside. Don't take any out. Buy high quality growth stocks. Admittedly, we are emphasizing growth stocks. Uh, there are other investment strategies which invest in, uh, well, momentum. If a company's going up, they say jump on the bandwagon as long as it keeps going up. We don't view that as fundamental and we believe it requires a lot more specific attention to the stock. If you have a good company that's fundamental, it will rise and fall over time. Not all stocks go up all the time. Look at the last three months. But if it's a good quality company, over time, it will go up. Uh, one thing you should understand that an investment club does not trade. We buy stocks with the intent of holding them for five years. That doesn't mean we hold them for five years. Sometimes you make a mistake and the company doesn't perform and you sell. 
Sometimes it does you know, extremely well, and you buy more. But we believe in growth as a core. And actually, if you look at the world economy, it's all based on growth, possibly too much so, according to some commentators. And when we say reinvest dividends, it doesn't necessarily mean in the same stock. It's just, you know, don't pull that income out. And then the fourth is diversity by industry and company size. It's simply don't put all your eggs in one basket. If you studied the stock market, you will see that when some stocks go up, others go down. And there's not necessarily a one-to-one -one ratio, but by diversifying in industries across the board and small companies, medium companies, and large companies, you'll minimize the volatility of your portfolio, i.e. you'll minimize the ups and downs. And basically, uh, next slide. And this kind of summarizes what I've been talking about. You look for a good quality growth company. Sometimes they're hard to find. I mean, how many people wish they bought Apple when it first came on the scene and then just held it through thick and thin? I mean, it, it tanked somewhat when Steve Jobs left, but if I'd kept the Apple stock I sold to finance my children's education, I'd be a wealthy man or wealthy. But I think my kids' education was more important, so I'm more wealthy in that regard. Well, once you found a good quality growth company, then that's good, but that's up to today. What is it gonna to do tomorrow? What is Apple gonna do in the next five years? You look at its track record, but you also have to think ahead. Uh, analysts like the uh, story of Kodak. They didn't make the switch from film to digital and they paid a price. So once you found a good company, you think it's gonna do well, then you have to say, well, how much is it costing right now? And is this a reasonable price? And the tools, that I've mentioned, the stock selection guide and the first cut will help you to do that. And then the decision, you, you know, debate, discuss and vote and decide whether to buy, hold, sell, or sometimes say, we'll just watch the stock. We think it's good, but it's a little expensive. It might come down in the next few months and then we'll go in and buy some. So that's basically what clubs do using the group dynamic and supporting each other. It's fun, I think it's safe. And most importantly, it educates you in how to be a good investor and how to understand you know, what investments are all about. And with that, Craig, I'll turn it over to you. Great. Thank you, Jim. I appreciate that. The next slide is talking about uh, consistent learning opportunities. And let me give you a little bit of background about myself and we'll cover the different things that are on this slide. Uh, my name is Craig Bramer and I'm the local, local president of the San Francisco Bay Area chapter for better investing. Uh, we're all volunteers as you heard from uh, Harriet and Jim earlier. And this is a local chapter. Um, you've heard from Harriet talk about investing and better investing in its history. And you saw that chart, which we only gave you one chart. There's obviously lots of other charts we can give you that will talk about investing in history. And uh, what you will see pretty conclusively over all those charts is investing over time tends to make you money um, pretty consistently over the decades. It does take some time, though. And you heard from Jim some of the basic concepts about how Better Investing thinks about investing and how we think uh, investors can invest. There's obviously many different ways to invest. We're just showing you one way and one way that we've known that has worked for the last 70 years. Um, from the original founders that found uh, how to do this process, they've been showing us and some of us have been doing these for many years. I myself 
And, and so, and I, I'm the wrap up person here. So I'm going to show you all the different resources that are potentially available through Better Investing to help you if you want to actually go out and start your own investment club or start investing. And, and, and so my background is a little different than what, uh, Jim and Harriet's. Um, I'm actually a financial professional. I was educated um, in finance and accounting coming out of, out of college. But I have found investment clubs have been a great way for people to learn how to invest. Um, I started my first investment club in 1987 with some uh, friends in college. One of my friends suggested, yeah, let's do a, this investment club. And we did, and on, on average over the decades that we've had, it's still going still in a day, we put about average about $100 a quarter in. And a year or two ago, we crossed a little over a million dollars. So it's done well for us over time. It's gotten about maybe a little bit better than market return, but it's done well over time. And to stay together and build your assets is, to me, the important piece. Now, I became involved with Better Investing in the 90s after my first club was started. Um, and, and got involved in the local level, which I'll, I'll describe in this chart. And, and that has helped me become, I think, a better investor, but also a better communicator of how to think about investing. And um, so I've been involved with this for a long time. I uh, teach both locally here and as is Jim and Harriet has done over the, over the decades. And uh, I also now teach at the national level for the last decade. Now on this slide, the most important piece on this slide is the upper left, where it says the building blocks of success, successful investing. Jim has walked through a number of building blocks of how to invest. Harriet has walked through maybe groups to help you in investing. We think better investing is a pretty good deal. We've been involved with it for a long time. That's usually a pretty good testimony that maybe something there works. Um, I believe, and I think everyone else does on the, the board that are all the volunteers that are on, that we think education is key to becoming a better investor over time. So that's part of the building block. So the more you can educate, we think the better off you'll be. Obviously, investing is important for people to get ahead in life if they want to build, let's say, more assets to help themselves or their family in the long run. So all these things are kind of important things to think about. These are the building blocks of successful investing. So on the lower left, these are our local online learning events. So we have a model club meeting every month. You heard about that earlier. It's the second second Thursday of every month at 545. Sometimes they're virtual. Well, all meetings are virtual, but there are some in-person meetings. And the next one we'll have in person will be on April 14th. So um, if someone wants to do that, please contact myself and we can get you into that meeting. Uh, we have board meetings. We also have other events. Better Investing is teaching today, but we're also gonna have three other classes throughout the library's Financial Literacy Month. This is just something we do. We try to educate people. On the right-hand side, this is really your local chapter support for your clubs, or if you're an individual investor. You'll have the local events, as which as you see on the left-hand side. There's contacts on here. So if you want to reach out to someone and say, hey, I got a question about this, you have the ability to reach out to someone locally. We have a model investment club, which both Harriet and Jim have both shared. It meets monthly. We have 15 members. We manage $130,000. Um, good way to learn, good way to see how people act and, and learn about investing. We have something that's called Visit a Club. You go to a website, you, there are other clubs that will allow visitors to come visit their clubs and you see how they operate. The big benefit of stepping back and looking at another club is seeing how they operate. What do they do? What, there might be things in there that you might learn about and think that, oh, that makes some sense. I ought to do that. Um, so all this kinds of stuff that's out there. Lastly, there's investment club support. There are 11 volunteer directors in the San Francisco chapter. Not all of us go out and teach, not all of us do club visits, not all of us do different things, but as a group, we support our local chapter and, and we do quite a bit, I think, to help people become long-term investors. Uh, again, at the national level, if you were to be a member of Better Investing, you don't have to be a member of Better Investing, but there's something called the Better Investing National Con Convention. This year, it's held in June 24th through the 26th in Dallas. Um, this is roughly two and a half days, three days of a whole bunch of education classes, um, tons of education classes taught by uh, various people that have Better Investing background, 
typically. Um, some of them are professional investors. Some of them are just people that have been investing for a long time. They've taught these classes for many years. And this is a great way for people to learn more and more about investing. If you want to learn more, there's a there's a ability to click on or not click on here, but take this and put it in your in your browser and, and go learn more if this is something that becomes an interest to you uh, wanting to do this. This year is in Dallas at the Westin. And, and like I said, there will be hundreds, uh, there'll be hundreds of people in attendance. Uh, and uh, at least typically that's what we normally see, 500 to 1000 people. Uh, and there'll be something like 50 to 70 teachers um, that are there that are, many people have been teaching for many, many, many years. So great way to go and learn and uh, hear how other people are doing it from an investment perspective. This slide has to do with a stock, what's called the Stock Selection Guide, otherwise known in our world as a SSG, Stock Selection Guide. It's an online analyst analysis tool. And this is a picture of the first page of the SSG Plus. In Jim's slides, he had a picture of the SSG Core. It's a different module. The Core is a, for be, more beginning investors to walk through step by step. Once you've been doing it for a while, people like to go to the SSG Plus because it's a faster process to go analyze your companies. And this is the basic information you look at. This is page one of page two. And literally there are two pages to help you analyze a company and make a decision. There's an additional other pages that support data, which is called quarterly data, which allows you to have other history that you can go look at. But this is our primary analysis tool. We spend our time looking at these combining this with other data from other resources. It could be a first cut, as Jim described earlier, that someone has written explaining why we'd like this company. It could be a value line report. Um, if you haven't, aren't familiar with value line, go to the value line at the library. Uh, it's a great resource to use. It's an independent third party that, that analyzes roughly 1,700 companies. And that gives you the ability to have some history about all the companies you're looking at. Uh, this online analysis tool is a good way to learn how to look at companies. In my mind, um, having been investing for 40 years, I look at this as a good way to analyze a company's business model. And the, obviously the better statistics out there will show up through their numbers um, if they're a good company over time. So to help people learn about investing, we have sometimes local classes, both in person and virtual. Um, we will be doing another virtual one this fall. Uh, we'll probably do some local ones again this year as well. Additionally, at the national level, they do, they have lots of videos, lots of historical classes they've taught on walking through the stock selection guide and explaining what parts are important, how to fill it out, how to think about the different sections. And there's many, many people out there that have spent their time spending many hours teaching this document. But it's a very important tool for us. Again, at the national level, this is information resources. And on the upper left, it says most active stocks. So you can get information about um, what are the most active stocks that Better Investing is tracking of its membership. You can see where we are looking to buy and where we're looking to sell on some of those different names. And then you can make your decision. Do you agree or don't agree with that? That's in the upper left. On the upper right, there's also something called the Better Investing Top 100. This is the most common holdings of our members that they track. This is a segment of our population they track. And so you can see that the top 100 companies. Why is any of this data important? Well, if you're looking for a new idea, it might be nice to see what other people are looking at. Why go figure it out or create the wheel yourself? And this time it's already been done. Others are doing this. You can, you can get in their information and then put it in with your information and make decisions. Does this make sense to you? On the lower left, the Better Investing Magazine. This is a monthly publication. I think it's one of the best financial magazines out there, specifically focusing on two areas, stock investing and club investing. And if you are have interest in both those areas, which I have had for 40 years, then I think it's a great place to go and learn about that. And it's and they, every month they will analyze a, at least a company, usually analyze two or three at different levels. And again, new more ideas for you to think about investing. And then in the lower right-hand corner, we have, as Jim and Harriet, I think both talked about, first cut. So these are reports written by Better Investing members. 
uh, from across the country. It could be someone from the Southeast. It could be someone from Minnesota. It could be someone from New York. They've done the report. They've submitted to Better Investing. Better Investing has put it available on their first cut um, section of their website. And you can go see what other people look, like, look at. This was interesting to us as a model club member because earlier um, this year, we went to go look at us, I think it was last year, we went to go look at a stock. And at the same time that we were looking at two other chapters where people had also written a report about that same exact stock. And they had also all came to the same conclusion that we came to that this company, I believe it was Adobe, was looking attractive. And so we looked at that and said, hmm, these are two other clubs coming up with the same conclusion that we kind of came up all around the same time, all independent of each other. We didn't talk to them, they didn't talk to us. And so it was a nice way to see that the process works independently of each other. So on this slide, investment club accounting. Um, most clubs, when they first start off, and even existing clubs, the accounting side is scary. It requires a lot of knowledge at some level. It requires um, consistency and the ability to work through things. But I would argue with, uh, with using investment club accounting, in this case, uh, Better Investing offers their own. It's called myiclub.com, uh, online investment club accounting and portfolio management. Um, this is the most widely used website in the world for investment club administration and communication. Uh, I think it, it can, it will significantly help any club looking to start off, make your accounting much easier. In many cases, uh, when I first started my first of, of three clubs, it was done on Excel spreadsheet, much harder, much more complicated. This makes life a lot easier. And there are other, other, there are other accounting software out there that competes with them, but this is the uh, the most popular one and better investing does support this. And I would advocate if you're looking at starting a club, I would look to get some sort of accounting software. It'll make your life significantly easier. We also believe at better investing, you should try things. Try it first before you start investing. Number one, but try it first before you, you have to give some money over to somebody. So um, go to best, betterinvesting.org. When you go there, there will be a little box that says you can trial things and see how we do things. But as you can see on this page, we have why invest in stocks? Well, there's a course that will walk you through why you should invest in stocks. Also on the bottom, there's is some stock ideas. Go to the first cut and go see some of the latest stocks, uh, cuts, first cut stocks reports that have been put out there. So there's lots of information on what I would tell you to help investors get to become better informed over time. And very simple, just go to betterinvesting.org and to see where you go from there. There's ability just to sample things. On this page, if you're looking at really starting a club, there are a number of different things that we have specifically that can help you out. Uh, and they're all free uh, in most cases. So getting started with Investment Club up in the upper left-hand corner, it's a step-by-step -step instructions to help clubs get off to the right start. Additionally, I would also reach out to your local chapter. In this case, if you're up in the Bay Area, you reach out to us. We would be happy to chat with you in the beginning to make you sure you understand how to think about different things, both from an investing and an operations perspective. Many of us have seen many clubs over the decades and can give you different levels of advice. Number two, to the right of that, 10 essential steps to starting a club. These are just basic steps to start forward that you should to think about. In the lower half, club operations. There's a club application to join Better Investing to get all of these resources we're talking about. Um, and again, finding a model club. We have one locally. We would argue, please come out and visit us. We think we can be useful and, and you can see how we operate. You don't have to do what we do, but you can at least watch what we do. And at the very bottom here, betterinvesting.org slash clubs. Go to that. There's a bunch of different articles in there or videos that might be useful for you to learn more about what to do with an investment club. Also, on this slide, you know, take your next step. Again, there's lots of different ways to get going forward. In the lower right, we give you our phone number and, and, and uh, our contact, and that's enough of the hard selling going on. But from our perspective, perspective, there's a lot of information we offer, anything from webinars for club treasurers to upcoming events. I will tell you there's probably an event, several events every week that uh, someone holds across the country for better investing um, uh, that are usually can either be free or very low cost to help you learn, become, and learn more about investing. I will again point out first cut reports. We're quite happy with those. And then lastly, you can see um, 
and learn from different people about online stock studies that people have done. You can see what other people do, and there's various classes that we hold throughout the month, uh, whether it's a ticker talk class um, that will walk through a whole bunch of different names and walk through some pieces of the SSG to other classes that will help you become and learn a bit, becoming a better investor. At the San Francisco local level, we have the Bay Area Model Club. And here's a picture of one of our most recent meetings that was done in virtual form. As I mentioned earlier, we have 15 members. We have 100, around $130,000 we're investing. Uh, we have uh, about 15 stocks in our portfolio. We meet monthly, and you can see um, most of our pictures there. And uh, this is something we do every, every month. Uh, in April, we'll meet in person, though there'll be a number of people still joining us virtually due to their locations. Um, second Thursday of every month at 5.45, April 14th of this month. In this case, will be in the main library at the SISIP room. But please reference uh, me, uh, email me, my email address will be at the end uh, for a slot in the room. We have limited space of 15, 15 chairs in the room, so we can't have more than 15 people. And usually the members take up about seven or eight of those chairs. So uh, we do have a limited amount of space, but we meet every month. You can come as often as you like. If you want to reach out to any of us, you, that is the local Better Investing email address. And uh, as a summary, I want to touch on a couple of different things. We hope you'd consider looking at, and starting your own investment club. We think it's been a great way to go. As I said, I started my first one in 87. Um, I, I started two more in the next uh, six years. Uh, all three of those are still going today. All have grown very nicely over the decades, and it's been a great way to learn how to invest. The last one is the San Francisco Model Club, which we started a little over 10 years ago with uh, several of our directors and is now expanded out to uh, adding a number of new people, that, well, again, all learning how to invest. I think investing, number one, is obviously very important for your financial future, but also learning how to invest in groups is a great way of, of leveraging off what other people have learned and see how they get along in life. And then lastly, if you want to see more, go to betterinvesting.org, the videos. Um, and there's several videos in there that are for, for free that you can go see and hear about what um, other people think about investing clubs. So with that, let me stop. And uh, here's our email address on the last slide and, and, and open it up to any questions about getting started with clubs. Okay, thank you. Um, there are a few questions in the chat. So uh, JP and I will go through those. Um, so the first one is I wanna confirm, yes, uh, everyone who registered for this class will be sent a link to the recording so you can watch this again and also the slides. So you will have all the contact information and everything. And then I'll take the first question, which is, um, I believe Harriet said this, can you clarify what you meant when you said inflation rate is riskier than inflation? Did you mean inflation rate is riskier than investment? Um, and just quickly uh, confirm and explain that question, that statement. Okay, um, when I was saying I was, I was more scared of inflation risk than investment risk, inflation, basically, you lose purchasing power. Um, in the last couple of months, you can see uh, how much inflation um, has affected our food prices and everything else. And you know, if you multiply that over a lifetime, it is, very, to me, uh, very, very risky not to do anything with your money. So I would rather take the investment risk than the inflation risk. Because like I said, uh, you know, growing up, we lived through the inflation risk and I see how difficult it was for uh, my parents. Does that answer your question? Thank you. I think that's what they were getting at. And I, I figured that's what you meant, but just wanted to make sure. And that's okay. really interesting. Thank you. Okay, go ahead, JP. Do you see another one? Well, I see one that uh, Jim answered in the chat window, but perhaps he can do that vocally for people who aren't paying attention here. But uh, the question was, are the meetings free? And Jim, you're still muted. 
that helps. Uh, the model club meetings are free. Uh, our San Francisco chapter board meetings are free. Uh, in terms of if you go visit another club that accepts visitors, I've never heard of one that charged. Uh, on the recordings and such on the Better Investing website, some of them are free, some of them you have to be a member of Better Investing before you get full access. And at the various uh, talks, uh, presentations that are put on uh, what the model club and the chapter do for financial uh, week or month, those are free. Uh, some presentations are made online and there's a nominal charge. Before the pandemic, we used to have once or twice a year, a half day or a day of classes at a, a local college or meeting place and there was a nominal charge for, it, for those. But the model club meetings certainly are free uh, we welcome everyone. You can attend in person when they're in person, which April's will be in person and uh, quarterly thereafter. The other two uh, hangover from the pandemic, we meet virtually. And you're welcome to join those meetings by Zoom. And JP, this is Craig. Um, one thing to be aware, we do have our board meetings, which is on the uh, out that is available to anyone to come join. But those are our, our operating meetings, basically, to help us plan out our future. We would love anyone to come and want to join us and become better to, to help educate others. We have found that many people uh, through the board become better investors because they learn so much from doing versus just sitting back and watching what other people tell them to do. But it is an, it, it is an opera more of an operating meeting of how we run our chapter on a month by month basis. The model club is actually, you can see us doing investing things on a day to day basis. So those are really two different things. Right, let me emphasize the model club. It's an actual club. We invest money. Our meetings are business meetings. Uh, we do have an educational segment, but most of the meeting is devoted to running the club. Uh, we are hoping to model how an investment club should be run. A lot of investment clubs are more social. Uh, we are pretty much strictly business, which is not to say that we don't have fun, but uh, strictly business. So come and join us. You can uh, hear how a model investment club runs, what goes into running an investment club, how you make decisions, uh, what reports are prepared and presented, uh, what the financials are, et cetera. Uh, so if you're interested, join us. Perfect, thanks to both of you. And perhaps we have time for one more. Here's a good one. Do you think that there are any investment groups in France for American expats and, and or how much support could we get to start one? <laughs> what do you guys think, a trip to France? I think we need to investigate that by all meeting in Paris next month. There you go. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> so, sounds good to us. Uh, I'm sure I have no idea, but there's, there, but I don't know of any. Yeah, I, I don't know of any, but Better Invest, could tell you. He could call him up and see if there's a club over there. Um, there are clubs all over the place, and uh, there could be, but I have no idea. Interesting question, though. But the beauty is if with virtual world that we live in, the fact that Better Investing's most of their information is in the cloud, it can be accessible from any place. And so you can do it from anywhere, uh, at least from my perspective. And uh, it's a great way to you know, learn more. So either way, I go to the website, you can ask them a question and, and, and they could tell you whether there is some groups in France and if they'd have the support, but you know, everything is available online. And so thus, theoretically, it's available any place in the world. Okay. Um, I don't see any other questions. JP, did you see anything? No, I think that's it. Okay. I want to make a quick announcement since um, value line was mentioned during this presentation. On Tuesday the 5th, we will be having a class, Introduction to Value Line, taught by Harriet at 3 p.m., and you can find the information to register for that on our website. And I'll also include a link in the follow-up email that I'm gonna send later on today for everyone who registered for this class. So 
that is an SFPL resource. You do need a library card with us to access it, but it's full of information and you can learn about it this week. Um, I wanna thank everyone for coming. And also I wanna thank our wonderful presenters. Um, this is Financial Literacy Month. So thank you for helping to spread the word and spread information. Uh, oh, and you're getting a really nice thank you in the chat. So uh, I wanna wish everybody a wonderful Sunday and enjoy the rest of your weekend. And um, we may see some of you later this month for more classes. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Doreen, for mentioning Value Line. <laughs> yes, thank you so much. Okay, okay. we will talk soon. All right. Take, okay. take care, everybody. Thank you very much for okay. attending. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.